we are slowly uh, getting towards the climax of our course. We have talked about homonuclear dynamics, heteronuclear dynamics, we have discussed uh, how MOT can nicely explain why carbon monoxide uh, behaves as a strong sigma donor through carbon atom and a good pi acceptor through the same carbon atom. Now uh, what we want to do is we want to venture into polyatomic molecules. So today and for the rest of this course we are going to discuss uh, molecular orbital theory for polyatomic molecules. And today we will discuss the case of only one molecule, the favorite molecule of all chemists, methane, right? Very nice tetrahedral molecule. Uh, we have already discussed the valence bond approach towards understanding a molecule like this. Let us see how different MOT is. Does it give us the same result? Does it give us uh, some new information? What happens? So uh, the motivation for doing this of course is uh, that polyatomic molecules have a particular kind of geometry. And this geometry is explained very nicely in valence bond theory by the use of hybrid orbitals. Okay? Now it is not as if you cannot uh, set up molecular orbital theory for polyatomic molecules using hybrid orbitals. One might be tempted to do so because then the geometry is retained. The problem is hybrid orbitals are associated with localization. If you remember what we had discussed for carbon monoxide, the whole reason why hybridization of carbon atom orbitals was invoked was that uh, we would get very highly directional uh, sigma hybrid orbitals H1 or H2 whatever we called it at that time. So if you use hybridization, if you use hybrid orbitals and you construct MO picture, then uh, you would get a, an MO picture where electron clouds would be strongly localized. But then that gives up the biggest advantage molecular orbital theory has over valence bond theory and that advantage is that of delocalization. What I am trying to say is this, suppose we are talking about methane, I okay. will draw that box as usual. How do we draw it? I do not remember exactly how I have drawn it later on but I will just draw it like this. Put one dot here, leave aside the next two vertices, put another dot in the next, again leave aside the other vertices. So where will I go? I will go here and here. Okay. So of course uh, these are the 1s orbitals let us say, P, Q, R, S these are hydrogen atoms or we can say that they are the 1s orbitals. What do I do? Uh, where is carbon atom? At the body center somewhere here. So I can take an sp3 hybrid orbital here say pointing towards P. Then when I draw the MO, I will call it psi P that will be some C1 multiplied by psi 1s of P plus C2 of H1, I will call this H1. Similarly, you can write psi q will be equal to some C3 into psi 1s of q plus C4 into H2, where H2 would be the hybrid orbital pointing towards your uh, q. So, this way I can write 4 molecular orbitals that would be the localized MOT for methane. If that is the case, what kind of uh, energy diagram would I get? Sorry, I should have actually made a slide where I had, I would have uh, shown all this for whatever reason I forgot. But let me, please bear with me, this is the, uh, we can draw this energy diagram without much fuss. Let us say uh, this is your carbon 2s and 2p 
and uh, we have generated 4 equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals so that is 3 4 and let us say hydrogen atom 1 s wave function has energy somewhere here. So, what I am saying is if this is the case oh, I should draw 4 1 2 3 4 because there are 4 hydrogen atoms right p q r s. So, the simple uh, localized MOT would give me a picture like this. I have 4 degenerate molecular orbitals well 4 degenerate bonding molecular orbitals 4 degenerate anti bonding or molecular orbitals the bonding ones would be all doubly occupied. And if this is the case if I look at ionization energy of if I look at ionization energy what kind of a ionization energy should I get only one value of ionization energy. So, now let me talk a little bit about photo uh, ionization ok photo electron spectrum. What is photo electron spectrum? You give so much of energy x-ray typically or sometimes uh, very uh, high energy UV light that an electron comes out and uh, goes into the continuum right electron gets detached the molecule gets ionized. So, typically what you do is you use very high fixed value of energy let us say 20 electron volt and let us say kinetic energy uh, sorry let us say ionization energy of the orbital from which this is removed let us say that is sorry, 13 electron volt. So, kinetic energy of the electron is going to be 7 electron volt 20 minus 13 simple. Let us say there is some other energy level at 11 electron volt then kinetic energy will be uh, something like 20 minus 11 9 electron volt. So, if I plot something like intensity against kinetic energy of electron or I can just write ionization energy I should get one band right single band in photo electron spectrum is what is predicted from localized molecular orbital theory which is uh, nicely in accordance with our uh, valence bond picture. However, as I said this gives up on the biggest advantage and that biggest advantage is your uh, delocalization ok. So, what we will do is we will talk about delocalized MOT, but before that uh, I request you please remember this discussion. If I use localized molecular orbital theory then I am going to get one value of ionization energy one band in the photo, photo uh, electron spectrum ok. That being said let us go ahead and discuss delocalized molecular orbital theory picture. What does that mean? I want delocalization so I will not use hybrid orbital ok and we will remember that atomic orbitals with proper symmetry can only be combined. So, now see uh, carbon atom central carbon atom has two uh, orbitals that are relevant in our discussion 2s and 2p 2s and 2p right and uh, this 2s and 2p can separately form linear combinations of hydrogen 1s orbitals with matching symmetry. So, what we do is we first construct a linear combination of p q r and s 1s orbitals and we make combinations of particular symmetries that is why these are called symmetry adapted linear combinations SALCs in short or SLCs. If I am speaking uh, Hebrew and Latin right now please bear with me for a few more minutes things will fall in their place ok. But remember symmetry adapted linear combinations are constructed using the atomic orbitals of the pendant atoms carbon is central atom and this hydrogen atoms are sort of hanging or are suspended from carbon they are called the pendant atoms ok. 
you have to perform symmetry adapted linear combinations, linear combinations of pendant atom wave functions orbitals that have the matching symmetry with 2s orbital and then later on 2p orbital. What would the matching symmetry be? In this case if we take p plus q plus r plus s okay, I am calling it psi h s psi 1 s of p plus psi 1 s of q plus psi 1 s of r plus psi 1 s of s that has matching symmetry is not it. So, if I take linear combinations like this c 1 multiplied by psi 2 s plus minus c 2 multiplied by this psi h s what do I get when the sign is plus then I get bonding orbital bonding molecular orbital when the sign is minus then what happens this one is plus sorry sorry this one is plus let us say I have plus here plus here minus here minus here then for this part of the MO you are going to get bonding for this part of the MO you are going to get anti bonding so it is a non bonding situation or if 1 is plus 3 or minus same thing will happen. So, I hope now you understand what the meaning of symmetry matching is symmetry of the linear combination of atomic orbitals or symmetry of the salks have to be the same as the symmetry of the uh, orbital atomic orbital of the central atom. So, for uh, 2s orbital the salk that has uh, compatible symmetry is just plus 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 psi 1 s p plus psi 1 s q plus psi 1 s r plus psi 1 s s. What about p orbital? Which linear combination of hydrogen orbitals will have matching symmetry with p orbital? Remember here this slope is plus and this slope is minus sin of wave function. So, if I want to have matching symmetry then p should be plus q should be plus r should be minus s should be minus is not it yeah that is what I have shown here uh, filled circles means plus and uh, empty circles means minus this has matching symmetry. So, if I take a plus combination between these two I get bonding if I take minus combination then I get anti bonding. So, we will call this h psi h p is psi 1 s plus psi 1 s well psi 1 s p plus psi 1 s q minus psi 1 s r minus psi 1 s s you can now take linear combinations see what has happened I am constructing molecular orbitals by taking linear combinations of a lesser number of central atom wave functions I do not have to take 2s and 2p together I will take either 2s or 2p and depending on which atomic orbital I take of the central atom I will choose a linear combination of compatible symmetry of the pendant atom orbitals okay. symmetry becomes very very important that is point number 1. So, how is it that symmetry of 2s and 2p are different well 2s has no node and this one has a node. So, if you think of inversion for example this will be anti symmetric with respect to inversion whereas your uh, 2s will be symmetric with respect to actually everything. So, 2s orbital is totally symmetric meaning no matter which symmetry operation you use uh, its sign does not change it remains the same whereas by using some symmetry operations well there is no center of inversion actually uh, in case of a tetrahedron but we do have c2s right. So, now think of this c2 turn by 180 degrees what happens this goes here that goes here. So, this becomes negative. So, what I am seeing is that this orbital here is anti symmetric with respect to C 2 there is another C 2 here is anti symmetric with that C 2 also. However, with respect to this C 2 it is symmetric similarly you can think of the uh, of the planes this for example, is a plane, but I uh, will show this plane this is better is this a plane plane of symmetry yes it is might as well it is the other one just to ensure that I do not confuse you there is everything else actually you see the plane. So, with respect to this plane what happens to 
this linear combination PQRS. Q goes to S and P and R remain in the same position. So, it changes. So, there will be symmetry operations which will uh, change the sign of this linear combination. So, it will be symmetric with respect to sum, it will be anti-symmetric with respect to sum. So, behavior in response to symmetry operations is not the same for 2s and 2p orbitals they have different symmetries point number 1. Point number 2 I have only drawn let us say the pz orbital. If I draw px for example, if I draw px like this, let us say this is x. Then which linear combination of pendant atom wave functions will have matching symmetry? It will be well this is plus that is minus. So, P and R have to be have, have uh, negative coefficients, Q and S have to have positive coefficients. So, that will be minus P plus Q minus R plus S. This kind of linear combination will be required. Similarly, you can work out what it will be for PZ. Now, all these linear combinations are different from each other, but they have the same symmetry. Px, Py, Pz, they are in different orientations, they have the same symmetry. So, we have two kinds of molecular orbitals now, one arising out of 2s, other involving 2p, two kinds of molecular orbitals, these and these. Okay. They have different symmetries and remember this kind of orbitals is threefold, there are three MOs of the same symmetry. Will they have the same energy? Actually no, because there is no node here, there is a node here. So, what we expect now is that uh, we should have two groups of molecular orbitals, very different from what we were expecting from localized MOT treatment. We now expect that there will be two groups of molecular orbital, there will be a group of 1 arising out of 2s, there will be a group of 3 involving the Px, Py, Pz orbitals of the central carbon atom. Will they have same energy? No. Because remember more nodes translates into more energy. So, now we have this interesting situation, this one I have drawn so I do not have to draw by hand. We have 2s orbital and 2p orbitals of carbon atom, we have 4 1s orbitals of hydrogen atom, they combine but this time we do not hybridize the uh, carbon atom orbitals. Rather, we take an appropriate linear combinations, we have 4 linear combinations from here also right, P plus Q plus R plus S, P minus Q minus R minus S, P plus Q minus R minus S and I have forgotten what I said, so you work out what the fourth one will be. So, I get 4 degenerate alks here instead of the 4 1 S orbitals. So, the first one gives me the sigma bonding molecular orbital with 2 S that we call it sigma 2 S. Correspondingly, there will be an antibonding sigma 2s star orbital and there will be 3 degenerate 2p orbitals, 3 degenerate 2p star orbitals. Different picture is obtained from delocalized MOT approach to methane from what we got from the localized MOT approach. First, let us fill in the electrons to 4, 6, 8. How many ionization energies will be there? 2, right. So, we should have 2 kinds of ionization energy because uh, ionization energy means let us see if I can draw a straight line now. Let us say this is the continuum. This will be 1 ionization energy this will be another ionization energy which is more obviously this. So, sigma 2s orbital is associated with an ionization energy that is greater than ionization energy of sigma 2p point number 1. Point number 2 is that the population of sigma 2p is thrice that of population of sigma 2s. So, in photoelectron spectrum the band corresponding to uh, sigma 2p which means the lower energy lower ionization energy band that should be 3 times as intense as 
the band arising from sigma 2 s that is the higher ionization energy band. Now is a moment of truth I will show you the photoelectron spectrum and you can judge for yourself which picture is correct. Localized MOT picture where we expect one kind of ionization energy or delocalized MOT picture where we expect first of all two kinds of ionization energies and secondly the band corresponding to the lower ionization energy should be three times strong as that of the, the higher ionization energy. The answer to that remember Max Planck experimental results are the only truth here is the truth. You see lower ionization energy has a larger band higher ionization energy has a lower band. Well even before the saying that I should have said that there are two bands meaning two ionization energies. So the delocalized MOT picture gives me the correct result localized MOT picture does not. Uh, I would better erase this so that it does not cover up what I have written later that would be enough. So we do have two kinds of MOs, two kinds of energy levels and that should disturb us. What is the meaning of two kinds of MOs? I mean the bonds are all equivalent right otherwise how is it a tetrahedron bond lengths are all the same. So is that a contradiction? Is there a conflict between this delocalized MOT that gives us two different kinds of MOs and our knowledge that the four bond lengths are equal? Actually there is no contradiction. It is important to remember that MOs are not bonds. MOs tell you about uh, the wave function and in delocalized molecular orbitals every wave function is delocalized over the entire molecule. Go back and have a look at the wave functions. Each of the wave functions no matter whether it is sigma 2s or sigma 2p is delocalized over all the four hydrogen atoms and the carbon atom. Bond by definition refers to the electron density between two given atoms carbon atom and a particular hydrogen atom. So what happens is that each of these MOs contributes equally to each bond because they are uh, distributed homogeneously right. So every MO contributes the same amount to uh, the electron density build up between a given pair of carbon and hydrogen atoms well between carbon and a given hydrogen atom. So uh, this is an important thing to understand. Okay, MO and bond are not equivalent to each other. Okay, uh, they are interrelated but they are not equivalent. So there is no contradiction whatever we get from valence bond picture equal bonds uh, is what we can rationalize by MO picture as well. And this is a good example of a very fundamental quantum mechanical principle that we had stated towards the beginning of our uh, class properties of the system that you see depends on the experiment you perform. Eigenvalue that you get depends on which operator you apply. Take the same psi, make Hamiltonian operate on it, it will give you energy. Make Px operate on it, it will give you linear momentum along x. Similarly, the experimental equivalent of using operators is to use different techniques. You do photo ionization spectroscopy then you probe the actual energy levels the MOs photo ionization energy gives you a knowledge of MOs. So you get to see the MOs. You do rotational spectroscopy or you do uh, uh, extra crystallography if possible not talking about methane then you get an idea about the bond lengths right. So, this is very much like the proverbial blind man trying to figure out what an elephant looks like. The one who touches the foot says the elephant looks like a pillar. The one who touches the trunk says the elephant looks like a hose pipe. The one who touches the tusk says the elephant looks like a pointed sword, a pointed rounded sword or a spear. Elephant does not look like any of these. The holistic picture of the elephant is a uh, linear sum of the everything. So you perform a different experiment you get to see 
different property like this proverbial blind man something different body parts of the elephant. This is an important take home message that is uh, sort of a side product of our discussion of molecular orbital theory for methane. Okay. So, we have learned something very important, we have learned that it is better to use delocalized molecular orbital theory when we are talking about uh, uh, when we are talking about polyatomic molecules and uh, we get to understand that uh, we can uh, actually figure out which of our theoretical models is correct by comparing with experimental results. Even then you can go wrong. Remember Bohr theory gave us the correct value of Rydberg constant still we had to discard it. But at least your theory should match some experimental observation. So, that is what we wanted to say about methane. So, we are done with discussing sigma bonds. Now, we go on to the last part of our discussion that is for pi bonds, pi molecular systems right and that is where we will see that we use another kind of approximation called Huckel approximation uh, that is what we are going to learn in the next 2 or 3 classes and that will take us to the end of this course. Thank you.